Question five then, nuclear power. This is one of those ones that students tend to do either very well across the board or not very well across the board. So if you struggle with this, uh, it could do with reading up nuclear power in general probably. Uh, let's start off with this. Which of the particles is absorbed and emitted during nuclear fusion fission reaction? Sorry, let's get the terms right. Uh, there it is. There is your answer. Ooh. Wonderful. Uh, it's a neutron. So a neutron comes in, it hits the nucleus, it blows this thing up, the target nucleus. You've got the smaller fission products, also known as daughter nuclei, and you've got these spare neutrons that come off as well. So absorbed and emitted, that's got to be the neutron. Explain the use of a moderator in a nuclear reactor. Um, now I'm going to bring up a diagram with a nuclear reactor. It doesn't necessarily uh, mean that we need it for this particular one, but we'll stick it there. For illustrative purposes, the use of a moderator. You need to know the two things really that go on inside the uh, the nuclear reactor. You've got your moderator, you've got your control rods. Control rods tend to be more well understood by students. Um, we'll think about that later. Uh, the moderator is there to slow down the neutrons. Um, that's basically the whole point of the moderator. If you do that, it means that it's more likely that the neutrons will be able to collide successfully and cause fission. So slow down neutrons for one mark, uh, increase the chance of collision or fission for the second mark, or you could say maintain the reaction rate. That would be okay uh, as well. Uh, so that, that's the whole point. You could even say that it increases the reaction rate because without the moderator, neutrons would be going too fast. Uh, and as a result, you'd really struggle to get uh, many of the nuclei to uh, undergo uh, fission. Remember, this is what we've got with the fission thing. If we don't have the neutrons splitting up the nuclei, we won't have the fission taking place. Okay. Um, that's one of those things, if you're struggling to remember that kind of thing, Quizlet's a really good one for that. Um, make sure that you know all your terms uh, through something like Quizlet. Uh, two more. Describe how the thermal energy from nuclear fission can be used to turn the electrical generator in the power station. So this is where you basically go, okay, I'm just going to regurgitate everything that I know. Ah, let's get the right one up. There we go about the uh, the power station. They're only asking for two marks on this one. You could really give a six mark answer if you needed to. Um, but let's walk, it, walk us through. It says how the thermal energy from nuclear fission. So we're not talking about how the thermal energy got there in the first place. So I'm not interested in you explaining to me how the nuclei undergo fission or anything like that. We're already told that the thermal energy is out. And it's going, um, it's going to be a question of explaining what happens to that energy. So this hot water uh, coming through here uh, goes through the reactor core, it heats up, takes that thermal energy away, brings it to the, um, this is called steam generator in this diagram, uh, sometimes known as heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is basically going to take this, this cooler water, turn it into steam. There's your first mark, produce your steam. The steam um, then drives the turbine, the turbine is pushed along by that high power steam and then the turbine drives the generator the generator uh, when it's cranked around is going to produce electricity now think about it, I've got a feeling they might not actually mention this, uh, a mark for the steam at all I don't know, that's right in the first place um, creating steam, uh, first mark, steam drives the turbine, second mark in actual fact, you didn't need to mention it then powered the generator, because I guess it's mentioned in the question anyway, isn't it? So that makes a lot of sense. Final part, nuclear fusion is another type of nuclear reaction. Explain why there's no power stations using nuclear fusion. A lot of people said it would be too dangerous. That is not true. There are power stations in this country uh, that use fusion, um, and they are safe. Uh, in fact, they're safer than nuclear fusion stations. They just don't work very well, so we don't have them hooked up to the national grid without producing um, enough energy for them to be worthwhile. Um, why is that? Well, it all comes down to how nuclear fusion actually happens. You've got these particles, and they're travelling at speed towards each other, 
those were supposed to be arrows. Wow. That, guys, is an arrow. Here's another one. I think probably I should give up at this stage. Your two particles are travelling towards each other. They are going to repel. They're both positive. They're nuclei. They're not going to have any ne negative charges in there. So the thing is, unless they're moving at phenomenal speeds uh, and at great pressure, they are not going to be able to hit hard enough to stick together. They tend to just bounce off each other. Um, and as we said, the reason for that is that in order to get them to stick together, they need to get very, very close within a few femtometers, a very, very small distance, uh, in order for the force, the what's known as a strong force, to take over and pull them together. You don't need to know that bit. What you do need to know is that if they don't hit hard enough, they're not going to stick together. So we need to have very high temperatures. We need to have very high pressures. If we don't have that, then we're not going to have nuclear fusion. It's as simple as that. So the problem is, how do you get those conditions? You get them in the sun, no problem, but, I mean, we can't really stick a massive ball of gas with 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms of stuff in it um, somewhere in Oxford. It's not going to work. You need to build a small reactor, and you need to somehow recreate these conditions. Very high temperature, very high pressure. In actual fact, because it's a small reactor, you actually need, uh, need to whack these up even higher. So the simple fact is that the reason we don't do it is not because of safety, it's because it's actually really quite difficult to crank up the temperature um, and the pressure to the level that you actually need. Recreating conditions like the sun but hotter uh, is quite difficult on Earth, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, so your points, we're looking for three. Fusion requires high temperatures and pressures, there's your mark, in order to overcome the electrostatic repulsion of the nuclei. That's what we were talking about there. They're going to push each other away. They're going to need to move very quickly, uh, so that'll work. And we're currently, we can't do it. So there's your third mark. We are currently unable to maintain these conditions in a commercial reactor. Uh, the commercial bit is in brackets. You didn't need to necessarily say that bit. Uh, what I'm saying is that we've done it in experimental reactors, like um, JET, Joint European Taurus, um, in the UK, but we haven't been able to do it properly for the national grid.